The marathon can't be won in the first mile, but it can be lost. In this video, I wanna show you how you can properly warm up for and then pace your upcoming marathon so that you can maximize your chances of running a personal best. All right, runners, if you're someone who's trying to run really fast in a marathon, it's gonna be really hard for you to do that if we don't nail your pacing strategy because the marathon is really long, it's really hard. And if you don't quite get it right, if you go out too fast, if you have some other pacing problem with your approach, there's no doubt that you are not gonna be able to run as fast as you possibly could. So let's start with the warm up. How should you actually warm up for a marathon? Now the marathon is different from almost any other race shorter than it in that most runners don't actually really need to do a warm up. Instead, what we can do is just a dynamic warm up. For most runners, this is going to be sufficient. Spend about five to 10 minutes doing some light mobility and maybe some light strength exercises. Maybe just a few lunges and all the rest of the exercises from the standard warm up routine, which you can find on this channel. What we want to do is metabolically prime your body for running without really doing much hard exercise or much running at all, if at all. Because one of the major things we want to do with the warm up for the marathon is get you warmed up but not burn any excess glycogen. We don't want to be burning any fuel. That's why for most runners, we don't want to actually do any running before the marathon. So unless you're a 250, 240 or faster marathoner. If you're a guy, maybe if you're a woman, you're a 320, 310 marathoner. If you are faster than that, yes. Let's maybe do a one mile or even just a five minute warm up where you're starting really easy and then maybe by the last 30 seconds, you're running your goal marathon pace. That is an excellent warm up. Should only take about five minutes. But for most of us, if your marathon pace isn't that much faster than your easy running pace, we don't really need to do much of a warm up. Just do the dynamic warm up, skip any substantial strength exercises that are in your dynamic warm up. So, for example, in the standard warm up routine, let's skip the lunges. We don't need to do 50 lunges, maybe we just do 10. That is just fine to get us ready to start the marathon. Now, because the marathon is so long, I like to have runners treat the first mile or two of the race as part of their warm up. So, if you're starting the marathon, I actually want you to run a little bit slower than your goal pace for the first two miles or so. Not substantially slower, but just a little bit. We are continuing that warm up process even within the marathon because if you're like most runners, you probably didn't do any running before the race. So, we're going to skip that running warm up before we start the marathon and instead almost include that warm up at the very beginning of the marathon. So let's just say your marathon goal pace is eight minutes a mile. Let's maybe start the first mile at 8.10 or 8.15. And then by the second mile, you can be around 8.05 or 8.10. And then for the rest of the race, you're gonna hover right around eight minutes. It's okay if a couple miles dip under eight minutes. If you hit any downhills, that might be a good opportunity just to get a couple extra seconds to make up for those early miles. That I think is a strategy that doesn't have you run too fast during the race, but also respects the fact that you may not be 100% ready to run your goal marathon pace right from the beginning. So let's maybe use those first 10 or 15 minutes as part of the warm up, and by mile three, four, five, you are probably going to be feeling substantially better and ready to nail that goal pace. You know, I'm not that big into supplements, but I do love AG1 by Athletic Greens. I consider it my nutrition insurance, helping me cover all my bases so I know I'm not missing out on anything my body needs, especially when I'm training really hard. I try to eat really well, but of course, AG1 is that extra security that gives me peace of mind over my diet. One scoop per day, and I'm getting 75 vitamins and minerals, prebiotics, probiotics, antioxidants, and adaptogens. You can try it out too at athleticgreens.com slash Jason, and they're going to throw in a free year's worth supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs. Check it out at athleticgreens.com slash Jason. And unlike other middle distance races, shorter races, 
Because the marathon is so long at 26.2 miles, we do not want to bank time early in the race. We want to try to run as evenly as possible with those first couple miles a little bit slower, but our pacing strategy is to run even. We want to be super even throughout this race because if we try to bank time early, we are going to be forced to withdraw that time later in the race with interest. I love that analogy and it's one that just shows you if you really want to run a good marathon, you have got to be really good at pacing. You've got to know how to hit your goal marathon pace and be as consistent as possible with it. We look at some of the best marathoners in the world, they can negative split a marathon. They can finish that last 10K or 5K strong and fast. They're gonna put on a show coming down Boylston to finish up that Boston Marathon. But for most of us who didn't hit the genetic lottery, that is probably going to be really challenging. The only way most of us can do that is by sandbagging the first 20 miles and making that as easy as possible. It'll give you an impressive finish, but it's not gonna give you the most impressive finish time as possible. So our goal in the marathon is to try to run our marathon pace as evenly as possible. Now, because we're running even and we're running a marathon, that marathon pace is actually gonna feel really easy in the beginning of that race. It is going to be very, very easy for you to run too fast. There's a couple reasons why running too fast in a marathon is so dangerous to your overall finish time and is one of the biggest contributors to people hitting the wall or bonking around mile 20. First of all, you're increasing the rate of sugar burning in your metabolism. In other words, you're burning through all that glycogen that you have been so diligently storing the last couple days. So if you wanna have energy to run the last 10K strong at the end of the race, as strong as you possibly can, we wanna run even and spare those glycogen reserves early in the race. Now, the other reason why we don't wanna to run too fast early in a marathon is because of the mechanical stress of running faster than marathon pace. Every five to 10 second increment faster than marathon pace, you have to run faster. You're running harder. You are exerting more impact force on your legs and you're producing more, fo more muscular force with stronger muscular contractions. That means there's gonna be a little bit more muscular damage in your legs. So if you get to mile 20 and you've been running 10 seconds faster than your goal marathon pace because it's felt easy and you know you just weren't really that out of breath, all of a sudden that is gonna come back to haunt you. That's why you're gonna have to pay back that banked time with interest because not only were you burning through all your sugar stores, but you were also just incurring all this additional mechanical stress that your body wasn't ready to handle. Almost every single time a runner hits the wall in a marathon, it's because of one of two reasons. One, they started too fast. Or two, they simply weren't prepared for the distance. So if you're doing your long runs and your max long run is only 16 or 17 miles, and then you hit the wall at mile 20 in a marathon, you know why. You just weren't prepared for the 26.2 mile distance. So the next time you are getting ready for a marathon, let's prioritize running often at goal marathon pace so that this pace is familiar to you. It should be neuromuscularly familiar to you. Your brain should understand this pace so that you can execute it at the beginning of a marathon when you're completely fresh and also at mile 23 of a marathon when you're not so fresh and you're really struggling. Run that pace so regularly that your body understands it. You'll be able to execute it on race day and run the best marathon of your life.